Sure. This calf market has surprised the heck out of all of us. Who thought a year ago, when you sold $1,000 steer calves, we'd be talking about $600 steer calves this year? Nobody. It couldn't happen, could it? Well, it did. What happened to those $1,000 calves you sold to some feeder who put them on feed and fed them for 200 days? He didn't do so good. So he ain't so back so happy to buy them again, is he? So it's a little bit kind of a bad situation. Like Carl mentioned, feed is pretty cheap. So we got a real weak market, lack of buyer interest, and in cheap feed. Abundant hay, some salvage feeds like this scabby wheat, low interest rates. So we're going to start thinking about what should we do? Let's not sell today. Tomorrow could be a lot better market. How many of you believe that? It's going to be a lot stronger if we just hold off a while. Wait, can it go down further? It could. We've dropped so much now, I think we're starting to find a little floor, but I won't say it is the absolute. But I think waiting to market, hoping for a significant price recovery, should not be your strategy because if we look at future prices out, that's not the trend. Can we feed to heavier weight, create more gross dollars, and maybe market our home, our hay that doesn't really sell for much money unless we put it into a calf and make pounds out of it? And can we get some margin out of that? Yeah, I think we can. Carl's already showed you some examples. Looks like there is some return to that. You got low cost, abundant feed at home. You got calves at home that are being undervalued in today's market. Put your feed into them, create more dollars, get your feed marketed. Hopefully above the feed value, there's even a little margin for you. And that's what we're going to talk about. And then I always kind of look for where are the sweet spots in these markets. If we're going to feed calves, hold calves, do stuff with calves, we have to have a target in our mind of what weight do we want to get to and what month or time do we want to sell them. I can't seem to find the expertise to tell me when that exact moment is. But I've noticed over time, you know, there's kind of a sweet spot for green feeders late in the year for guys who want to go to grass with them. So if you're calving really late, you got these June calves, what do you do with them? Well, maybe you target a market, green calf market. The other sweet spot that's starting to show up as more people calve late, the heavy calf in October is getting to be a premium calf. Or a calf that can finish in an April finishing slot. So if you got calves that might fit that, don't slow them up. Feed them hard enough, heavy enough, and get them to town quick enough so they get that market premium. Other than that, I'll let Tim fill you in on the next sweet spot. <clears throat> risks. Well, so a lot of people don't want to feed calves because, you know, there's too much risk. If they're your own calves, you got a good herd health program, you're vaccinated. Your cows have a mineral program and you feed them well. You shouldn't have too much health problem. If you're putting commingled sale barn cattle together to be a cattle feeder, you got to have another set of skills. Identifying calves before they know they're sick, treating them, and all that stuff. Poor performance. Carl mentioned if we don't have a ration put together right, we're missing an ingredient, too little protein, out of balance calcium, we can get poor performance, and then we get a re poor return on our feed. And the one we're afraid of most years, and we should have been damned afraid of two years ago, when we could get $1,500 a calf, we background and the market go down in the three month period we're doing it. This year we're starting out at a pretty low place. I don't think she's gonna collapse, but we can talk about protecting that too. The really, really good managers would know which years to do this. Huh? Look at, back in 10, they made 70 bucks a calf backgrounding. 2014 cost you five bucks. On average, it's about 30 bucks. You do it every year, long haul, you're going to make about 30 bucks above your feed, above your yardage to background a calf. And let's talk about where we think 16 might be. Well, before we can do that, we got to at least figure out what they're worth today if we just sold them. Anybody go to a sale Monday? Watch any calf sell? 
Anybody actually pull up a computer screen and see what, what's happened today? Was it green or red or Christmassy, both of them, or what? Kind of red, huh? It was green till 1230. <laughs> <laughs> this market is volatile. She's up in the morning, down in the afternoon, down three days, up one day. So I talked about the holiday end of the lenders, and it was up $2. And I said, for all I know, when I was third talking, it could be down $2. It wasn't down $2, but it went down $2 from, from the high of the day and but in making projections, you've got to have some feel for what you think you could get your calves. And we've got some people who have had on-farm buyers buy their calves for years and years. And a couple of them have told me they won't commit and give them a bid. Well, you can always take them to an auction and get a bid. So we're going to look at what auction price is. Have we sold enough calves in North Dakota to establish a market yet? This is last week. Tim provided me this summary. It's of Kiss, Napoleon, Stockman's, and West Fargo. Damn near 10,000 calves sold last week. So we're starting to test the market. We're getting some <laughs> localized values. These are the prices broken down by weight increments, 350 to 380, the average 373, 143, uh, and this is all four markets grown together. So that was steers, this is heifers, and here I've just made it a little more readable. I wanted to see what these different weight classes were trading for. If you had 428 pound steers, they average $1.36 a pound, $582 a calf. What's it cost to raise a calf nowadays? Hopefully less than that, but I doubt it. So then we go up to $5.28. $1.28 average price, $676 per calf. And that meant the extra 100 pounds you put on from here to here was worth 94 cents more. So if you can put a pound on for less than 94 cents, you probably should feed it, shouldn't you? If we go up another 100 pounds to six 18-pound steers, $1.21, 748. You know, we can still get $900 calves, but they're gonna have to weigh a bunch. The value of added weight is around 90 cents a pound. Heifers are selling at a discount in the fall, like heifers always do. It's pretty consistent. The discount between light heifers and heavy heifers is about 14 cents. What will that discount be in February between the heifer and the steer? It'll probably shrink to less than 10, but there'll still be a discount. At finish, when they go to slaughter, what will it be? About zero then. So we got that to work. Consider our spreads and our heifers and our steers, and we got our weight classes of cattle to think about which weight we want to feed or what they might be worth. In any of these weight classes, whatever, there are some pretty known value added strategies that help you market your calves. Load lots. Load lots of uniform cattle. Well, some of us have that, some of us don't because of the scale we operate, but we can try to maximize it by managing a calving date or our breeding program. Two rounds of shots. I know people say they didn't pay him for his shots. I got the highest market and I didn't give mine any. There's exceptions. But generally, two rounds of shots gets you more dollars. Then just go back to the market report. Then. Okay. You might as well give my time. Yeah, go to the 550. 550 Steers? 550, yeah. Go to the... 1,085, you see down there. 124, okay, it's right there. That's the average. To 130, that is a spread. $650 to $750. That's $100 spread for the same calves in the same markets, the same day. The top is for the reasons John said, and the bottom is that they want that. Okay. So I'm saying, do you want to be at the top of that range in those averages? These things we know do that. Now, sometimes the things on the bottom do that. Natural source and age verified. I haven't seen as consistent of buyer interest paying more for some of that as I have the top things. So, one of the things in there is weaned over a month. Now, you can wean them and the market can crash in the month you're weaning and you, you lose out on it. But generally, if the market's kind of stable, once they've been weaned for 45 days, they're worth more than a balling calf. Price per pound, same weight. Now, so we gotta talk about what they're worth today. We're gonna do some budgeting and planning. 
I'm going to use that number, that market report, some of those values of added weight gain as my starting point. Then I've got to figure out what they might be worth later, after I've held on to them for a few months, after I've made them bigger. And we can use the feeder futures as a little bit of indication of what our industry is speculating and trading and think they might be worth down the road. This is a basis, an 800-pound steer. So if we're not going to have 800 brown steers, we're going to have heifers, we some bait, we'll be back some dollars. If we're going to have lighter calves, we'll be plus some dollars for the spread. So let's go out here to January. Get them past the first year. They're trading at 117. He said it might be down today a couple bucks. Maybe it's 115. That's a planning price for us to keep in mind. No, that was, yeah, that was the price today, Seven, 117. Okay, well, that's what it was Monday when I pulled this, made this chart. Now we get out here in April and further out, I said the trend for cattle is not in your favor because what, where are we going? We're down a few dollars the longer we go out. Does this mean this is what these calves are going to be in April, January, or March? Nobody knows. But we got people speculating they might be there and these are prices that with some strategies you can kind of lock in. At a cost, you can lock those in. I'm going to use them for planning my budgets. Okay, in a budget, we have direct costs, overhead costs. These are the kind of costs I'm going to assume and put in there. I've got the same feeds Carl was talking about at the same prices. So my rations are based on what he was just sharing with you. And my conversion, so I can get a feed cost per pound of gain. I'm going to put in a few other costs besides feed. This is your home-raised calves. I'm going to make you not charge full yardage. You're going to donate some labor to this enterprise. You're going to donate some use of depreciation of your facilities, but you're going to pay your electricity and fuel bill, okay? Now, if you were doing it for somebody else, you wouldn't donate anything to them. You'd charge a higher rate. That would be full yardage cost. And I have an example of where someone's doing cat work for you, custom feeding, that's 40 cents. Just your own, to cover some direct, 15 cents. I got interest at six. I got 1% of them dying. I got the average cost of a vaccine and a pour on and some antibiotic for the ones that got sick, averaging 10 bucks a head. Now, I've only got a little bit of marketing and trucking costs because if you had to truck the calves off, sell them at weaning, you got a trucking and marketing cost. This is a little added because you got heavier calves to truck and a little more gross value for a little more commission. So I've just put in a partial addition for that, okay? Then I said, well, what am I going to budget? Everybody's got different calving dates, different kinds of calves, different feed. I'm going to pick a few scenarios because there's so many you can come up with, and you'll probably have to do your own to figure out what's going to work for you. We can feed heifers or we can feed steers. We can have light calves that we carry on and feed, or we can take heavy calves and feed. We can feed for a high rate of gain, like Carl was talking about, that cheapens up our feed costs, or we can drag them out to our grass market. We can feed all winter, we can feed for 40 days. You know, so I picked a few, a few scenarios to make a few budgets to give you a, a kind of a representation of how it looks for doing some of this stuff. This is what I call the traditional steer backgrounder. He's got October 24th, yesterday when I did this, he's got 570 pound steers. That about what a lot of cattle would weigh. I looked at that market report, I said they're worth a buck 25 a steer. I am going to feed them for 2.3 pounds a day gain. That's all I tend to get in my backgrounding program. Is that kind of realistic for most of you? When I look at what a lot of backgrounders do, they're low twos. And then I say, we're going to feed them up to the end of January. To 770 pounds, we're going to put 200 pounds on them. It's going to take us 87 days, 200 pounds of total gain, and that animal would have sold for 713. I added 114 worth of feeding cost to it. I got a 37 cent feed cost of gain. I got a 66 total cost of gain. I said those pounds of gain are worth what? 85, 90 cents. It's cost me what? 66. This should work, shouldn't it? I said it did work. 56 dollars. The break-even was $1.10, and when I went to that futures deal, it said $1.17 for January, and so I got some money. So if you believe that's how it could work, you might want to background some calves. Well, I thought, 
uh, Tim said, do you want me to share with you my, uh, my sensitivity analysis table? I said, sure. And so what were we talking about? 125 calves, 117 outweights. I had 57. What did he have in his table? 55. Two great minds thinking alike, maybe, huh? <laughs> but he also showed in a table like this, if you could get $1.30 for that calf, and that market was only going to be at buck ten, not a buck seven. What happens pretty quickly? Shift e either one of those a little bit one way or the other, and we start to go out of the black zone into what zone? Losses. But for today, this is where we're at. Tomorrow, I'm not sure. Somebody said, 570 pound steers? What kind of runts are you raising? My calves, I already got a calf weighing over 800 pounds. They're going to average 650 or whatever. So I said, okay, let's say you got some bigger calves. You got 620 pound steers. They price out at a buck 21. And you got them big calves that you're so proud of that grow, let's feed them a little harder. Let's put some more of that corn into them. Grow them at three pounds. But let's stop here when we get into eight weights. Let's not go to nine weights because too often when you go to nine weights, you come home from the deal and said, Geez, I put the last 100 pounds on for nothing. The 880s are bringing more than the 950s. So we're going to say this is good, growthy calves that are capable of going to 880 pounds. We're going to get them out the end of January. Total gain, 260 pounds. Animal started at 750, yada, yada. Oh, same thing Carl said. You feed them harder and faster. Your feed cost per pound of gain goes down. Your cost of gain goes down. What happened to our profit? Went up. That's a good plan. Good, growthy calves. Take care of them. Keep them on track. Get them to the April market. What could be the fallacy here? What if they said, your calves are 880, but they're short and dumpy, and their briskets are full of fat, and they waddle? We ain't giving you a buck 11 for those kind at that weight. So if you don't have the right kind of cattle to take it, you should probably background at a lower rate again. But we got a lot of these cattle in North Dakota that can take it, too. I said, well, I, I know the market stinks today. If I can just wait a few months, I could come back. But I can't feed, so I'm going to hire someone to feed for me. I'll take him over to this lot. And he's going to do a pretty good job with them. In a short feeding period, he's going to average a nice gain. Only 55 days, taking them from 550 to 7. Uh, they're going to be out here right at, before Christmas. Nice Christmas money coming in. But our lot charge went up and our ration cost went up because he's probably not going to sell you his feed at cost to raise. He probably wants a little more margin. And he's not going to donate some depreciation on his facilities. <coughs> he's going to want full yardage. So we have a little higher break even, a little higher feeding cost. It was still profitable, but not as profitable. And then we have another scenario. Anybody read Beef Talk that Dr. Chris Ringwall writes, shows up in most papers? Okay. He says, go to June calving, May and June calving. Wean your calves in December. Hold them over a winter on hay or forage. And go to grass with them the next year. And then go to oat and pea and cover crop. And then put them in a feedlot and finish them. And you can make a lot, a lot of money doing it that way. So I said, I don't know, these guys don't probably have the pasture to go to with next year, and they probably aren't going to go to finish, but let's just take it through the backgrounding phase. Let's wean them not in October, let's wait a little later, leave them on the cow. These are late-born calves, and they're not going to be very big calves because they're late-born. And we're going to feed them all winter long, not 87 days, like 165 days, I forgot to change something. And they're not going to be done here in this budget till May, when grass time comes around. Our feeding costs are fairly high because we're doing it a long time, even though we're using cheap feed, $60 a ton feed. How'd that pan out? Well, you didn't lose money, but if you could make them really profitable next summer grazing them, you'd say, I just bought time to get to the profit window. But if you're going to dump them out at this point, you probably should have done a little faster backgrounding. Comments on that? Wintering them usually, usually got to make your money, if you winter a calf green, either this has to be a hot 
grass market, grass fever, or you got to graze them yourself. Uh, yep. Yeah, well, actually, what they did with th their calves, and that's what these costs are based on, they put them in some standing corn with a hay bale. So they picked some corn out of the field, too. But their cost was 154 for their feeding period, between some hay and some standing corn. So I just made the numbers come out so they came out to what their cost was. Yep, they were grazing in the cornfield with hay bales. Yep, unharvested corn, not stalks. Standing corn. But what it is, is you got a 72 cent a cost to gain over a whole year for that much gain, it doesn't leave much profit. Well, then I did some heifer budgets. Here's a very typical heifer budget, two pound a day gain. Like the steers I had at 2.3, a lot of times those heifers will barely do two when your steers do that. Uh, 78 bucks. Uh, got my heifers priced at $1.04. Well, I think it was $1.11. Now this fall, income next uh, March, we've carried them through the winter at two pounds a day gain. They sell them at $1.04. That's, uh, you know, 10 cents back from the steer at that time. I don't know. I thought, is that a realistic number to put on them? A projection of a heifer? 10 cents under a steer at a yearling stage? So, how about if we didn't put quite as much into them. We said replacement heifers only need to gain 1.6. They don't need two. Well, we're putting less pounds, so if we're selling feeder cattle out of this, they actually return less. They cost less to raise. If they're going to the cow herd, this might be what you want to do. But if you think you're going to turn them as into the feeder market, you've cut your profit in half by maintaining them as a replacement that has no value as a replacement. Now, some years we have tremendous value as replacement. I don't think so much next year. Anybody heard what bred heifers are selling for? I think it'll take the interest out of breeding a bunch of heifers this year. Then the late weaned heifers carried on hay. Everything was positive, but there was quite a range in positive there from feeding scenarios. I mentioned we don't know what the out price is going to be, and I'll turn it over here about at this point so Tim can pick up, but one of the tools we have is either buying put options or buy an LRP price protection contracts, which says we are guaranteed a certain price for a certain premium. And that's an added cost out of these budgets that I didn't have. And if we look at what some of those premiums are, this is expressed in dollars per hundred weight for these seven or 800 pound animals. Uh, you know, it's significant. It's 35, 40 dollars, 20 to 40, depending on what kind of level of price protection you're having. So that's one of the other things we have is a tool to help protect. And that kind of concludes what I got, so I know Tim's here to pick up on some of this price protection and out. Just go back to the market report once and kind of substantiates it. Okay. The, the market report. Yep. And then we'll come back to the LRP. But. Oh, yeah, one more, one more, yeah, one more. Yeah. Okay, there's you, steers. You know, John mentioned fleshy. Don't get them too fleshy. That's right there. It's, you know, ready. 850 said once they're flashy, they take them down. Well, yeah. Take five bucks off them. And the other thing, I agree with everything. We didn't rehearse this, although we did talk for five minutes, I guess, or whatever. <laughs> but anyway, and the other thing is, yeah, look at here, uh, 124, 125, but, you know, come here, come down to 750s, 125. John was talking about that. Why the higher price? Well, it's it's because of the, you know, get them, if they get to market by April, May, fine, if not, uh, today, uh, April futures were 104, and June futures 95, 96, so you know, $8 down, so that's why these are selling a lot, relatively, a lot better to these, because it's all. Everything John said is substantiated here. So. Yeah, okay, uh, yeah, and then go ahead to the LRP. I think we probably want to. I think we want to get to any questions. Any questions? But yeah, just go to the LRP. How many, how many have you 
had done options, feed of cattle options. Okay? They like the way they work, easy to use, don't like them. Oh, they're, they work all right. I mean, uh, some years they work good, and other years they don't. How, how many have used LRP? Anybody? Yeah, okay, uh, this is one. This of is the heavyweight steers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, today, I've got the new ones. This would be good till 9 tomorrow. Uh, and so the end date comes up to 1 January 24th, or you can go to uh, February 21st or March 21st. But anyway, the top one for uh, the January 24th, today you could have got, uh, got a 116, but it would have cost you five bucks. Five bucks a hundred, 40 bucks an animal. That, this, uh, there's a subsidy here, so you, there's a 13% subsidy. So multiply this by 0.87, which I already did for this one. So right now you could get a 116, you know, it would cost you yeah, 496, five bucks. Or you could get a 114 today, it would cost you four dollars. So you're at 110 net. Or you could get a 112, it would cost you 350. Okay? Or you can jump to February 21st, you could get a 115, it would cost you six dollars. Or if you're a beginning farmer, so you have five years or less. Finally, well, so long as you're, uh, if you're in college or if you haven't filed uh, egg income tax for more than five years and some others, you double the subsidy. You just, instead of 13, you do 23% subsidy. So it'd be another dollar, well, yeah. Another dollar off, Five roughly. Five dollars, another dollar off, so you'd be out of that top like four. So anyway, yeah. So you can have a projected $80 profit, but you take 25 off it, and you kind of protected yourself yeah. or something. So that's what LRP is. The nice thing, Peter Cattle Futures contract is 50,000 pounds. Here with LRP, you pick the number ahead you want to do. You can do steers or heifers. You pick the number ahead, so you can do... I'm going to do 100 head, maybe I want to do 20 head of steers, or maybe try to ratchet it around and do that. However, when you're locked in, you're locked in till the end. Uh, the other thing, Sean kind of alluded to it, but from a basis standpoint, again, with the November futures and all subsequent ones now, We've changed, like John said, up to 50 pounds. So it used to be 650 to 850, and now they're seven to nine weight. So theoretically, we went back and looked at how much that lowers the price, and it lowers it about three dollars. So in essence, theoretically, you could, you know, you could add three dollars to what you thought was a basis before. A lot of times along the I-90, and again, we saw that wide range of prices for the same market taxes, so you have to consider that. I know you're all on the top of the range, so that's good. But anyway, <laughs> uh, along I the I-94 markets, where the USD reports is what we have here now, along I-92, I said you got probably a, take at least $2 off of those prices there, I don't know. Again, it all depends on where you're at. So, I don't want to mix you up here, but along I-94, so in the past years, for that average of the 750 to 8 weeks, we've had about a par basis, okay? About even, now what? About up here, probably a negative 2 basis for the average of 750s. Now, at least theoretically, since we lower than $3, then, uh, uh, you know, where you had a par basis before, theoretically, it should be a plus 3 in the future. Well, so up north, we should be close to par now. Yeah, 
Okay. Whether that's going to happen or not, that's all theory, but that's the way that it's supposed to. So just keep that in mind. And, uh, you know, kind of interesting. That, that's been the case. The November, if you've been following the November futures versus the October, they've been 253, a little more than three, until this week, right? And now all of a sudden, the October futures is only steady because we're close to the end of October when we close out the October contracts. That's the steady. We ran futures up in the last four days uh, about seven, six, seven dollars. And so the November went up. So actually today, uh, November futures closed at 122.65 and October was 121.55. So November was a dollar above the October, so he plus three dollars out of that, it's four dollars above. But anyway, I probably yeah. completely mixed you up now with that, and I didn't mean to do that. I have a question for you, Tim, uh -oh. because I read this. 500 to 550 pound, five dollars lower. So what were they doing to light calves last week in North Dakota? Five lower. They didn't want them very bad. Seven, seven fifty pounds, six higher. Don't we have a winter wheat market this year? Does anybody want these lightweight calves? I guess we better damn well feed them if nobody wants them. We have a winter wheat market, and that was our expectations, but it didn't help hold through. They're, were they dry, or what's going on? No, no, they got, we got really good winter wheat pasture. They just don't want to put calves on it, huh? Wheat pasture, they're putting calves on it. And, um, see what happened, yeah. I was talking about the futures market today. The futures market was up even $2 higher, at least not the October, but the other ones early today till noon, uh, and then they went back $2, so they closed about even with yesterday, but they were up $2, but in, in a half an hour, they dropped off to $2. So that shows you how fair to the market is. One of the things there, looking at the January futures, everybody, or not everybody, but people say, well, man, if they get to 120, I might kind of do something, so they got to 119.75 in a half an hour. <laughs> dollars and so that's what we're facing in the market and that's going to continue to be the funds you know we ran them up seven dollars in the last four days and we hit that point and a fund bails and then everybody bails so they can uh, they can go down in the hurry so uh, but uh, anyway I don't know I think any further I, questions I there Your end, your ending weight. Eight fifty six seven thirty two zero. Now that's all on paper, but yeah, that's what you're 